Hello and welcome to this week's reading vlog. So once again, I am just reading what I feel like. I am starting off with fantasy because of last week's really mediocre run and I didn't read any fantasy. So I thought, let's go back to my favorite genre. So I'm currently just started The Lighthouse Witches. So far, so good. So we'll see how that pans out. I still have library books that I do have to read. So I will filter those in as well this week. I'm today, this week has been really rough. Uh, I didn't I didn't vlog some of the other days because a lot of stuff happened. There was some emotional relationship stuff that went down, which I'm not going to talk about. It's personal, but it, it was really upsetting for me uh, to be spoken to in that way. So there was that. Unfortunately, uh, Blue snuck into one of the rooms that Willow was in and Willow immediately attacked her and bit her tail. There was blood. She is okay. She's fine, but it is a very traumatic experience once again to have that happen. And I'm really now fearful, scared for my other cat's safety with Willow. It is just one of those things that I'm like, what if it happens again? And what if it happens if I'm not here, they manage to get through because I live in a very old house. And when you have very old houses, the doors sometimes don't lock shut. They can with swelling and everything else push open because that's just the way they are. So I'm always, I've got them barricaded. I've like I've put litter against doors, but I'm just thinking always, what if something happens and I'm not here to intervene and stop it from being fatal, you know? So I've contacted the, sh the rescue again. Uh, they still haven't listed her online. And I've asked them, please, it's been three weeks. This is not the right home for her. It is not a safe environment now for my other cats. I am concerned for their welfare. It is best that we find Willow a home where there are no other cats so she can just not be scared because she's attacking out of fear and she feels threatened, I guess, by the other cats and the need to compete for resources, even though she has, like I said, her own sections that the other cats don't go into. But yeah, uh, I don't know what's going on. They haven't messaged me back. So if they haven't put her up on Monday, I will find a different rescue to list her with. It's just very disappointing. But that was, yeah, that was full on. Uh, let's talk about my dating diaries. So today I am going on a date with a lovely lady. Kind of looks like Kate Beckinsale. So that's her nickname for me. We'll see how it goes. We have not chatted much at all. This is one of those scenarios where they've just gone, let's just go and meet up for a coffee and see if we vibe. And I'm like, okay, sure. Which is fine. You know, I am going in there with absolutely no idea of what really they're like. So there's lots of questions I can ask. So that's the the, the point of the high point of that. And um, she's asked if we could keep it to a time limit. Fine by me, you know, <laughs> like that's absolutely fine. I can I can comply with that very easily. Uh, so yep, just a very chill coffee. Very early in the morning though. Normally never go on, on a date this early in the morning, but hey, the rest of my day is free. So we'll see how that goes. I also was talking to a man uh, who did say that they were Christian in their profile. They are someone who is a bit more of a zealot, I would say, I would use that word. Very quickly, the conversation turned and they were questioning me about my tarot use. I, I like to use tarot cards. And that then devolved into them spamming me with Bible scripture after Bible scripture, some being like, thou shall not tolerate a witch to live. And then he ended up after going on that kind of tangent, he uh, went after my sexuality and was like, <laughs> Uh, Eve should only lie with Adam for she's made for him and that is a natural order of things and I'm like uh, Good luck with that mate and quickly unmatched. I'm not joking when I said I probably got a hundred Bible scriptures fired off at me just practically calling me a sinner so <laughs> That was a fun time in my head. I'm just like what is the outcome that you're hoping for this this kind of method where you just bombard someone with judgmental hateful scriptures about them as a person or, or how they live their life what how are you expecting them to respond are you expect them to respond oh i was lost and now i am found you have shown me the error of my ways like a shepherd to a lost sheep mm, like yeah no i was raised baptist i was very uh, in that sort of religious mindset until the age of 14 uh where certain horrible things i will not mention on here happened to me perpetrated by other members of that congregation and not just one it was two members of that congregation did things and I very quickly lost faith with the organized religion aspect of it and also the congregation the people there that are meant to be Christ-like and were doing things that were very unchristlike, like and it made me question everything it was a very hard time I still 
you know, I still, uh, when I say believe in Jesus and God I, I, and angels, I do, but I don't follow that religion, religious dogma, especially the things that are written in the Bible, the Old Testament particularly. I don't vibe with it. Anything that is hateful, judgmental, intolerant, not accepting, that's not for me. So I am, I guess what you call a spiritualist, right? Like I just, I'm open to anything that is loving and light and wisdom and tells you to treat others as you wish to be treated across all like religious dogmas. I just cherry pick, I guess, and use that as my ethos for living my life, you know, and I'm open to other modalities and healing practices and things that are frowned upon by some religious communities. So yeah, this, this guy was, was a doozy. I was just like, good day to you, sir. <laughs> Literally going on a witch hunt, bruh. I'm, I'm not to your prey. So yeah, that was, that was that. That was fun. That was a great time. <laughs> Oh man, I just have to laugh. It's just like I said, it's just interesting to sample all the flavors of human beings that are out there. But uh, today, yep, going on a coffee date and then home with my kids to chill out, read some books, hopefully good ones, because I'm dying for something that's more than a three and a half star, you know? I'm itching for a good story to lose myself in. Uh, then just the weekend ahead. So uh, I will touch base with you after my date. I'll give you a check-in. Okay, so just got back from the date. Um, it was not a romantic match for me. Um, she was 32, which is like the bottom of my age range. And she's in that phase where she's like, just quit her job. She's deciding that she's gonna go back to uni and figure out what she wants to study. And she's just, yeah, in that energy of, of uh, still figuring their life out. And for me, after my last partner went through that, I'm just like, yeah, no, I, I need to be with someone who's sort of stable. I think I need stability. I need someone who's sort of got their life and their routine and the situation sort of like she lives with three other people and share housing. And when I hear that, I just think, oh, there's pressure then to like move in together, you know? So I don't want that. I want someone who has their own life and I have my own life. And we share stuff eventually, but no pressure to do that. So, um, but it was really lovely to go on a date with another bisexual neurodivergent person. Loved it. It's just, there's just this instant rapport and understanding of each other. And I haven't had that yet. And that was wonderful to experience. So that was lovely, but like I said, not a romantic connection, but um, I'm home now and I'm having a play date for my kids. So I don't think I'm going to be getting much reading done today. So I may end up updating you tomorrow. Hello, I thought I'd just do a quick update. So I have read a lot of books. I will talk to you about them tomorrow. Today, I'm going on a date with the first person I ever went on a date with. So back when I was 18, the first person who asked me out was a bouncer at a nightclub and I went on a date with them and I decided on the date they weren't for me, we were not compatible, didn't kiss or anything, just had a nice date and then was like, sorry, but it's not a match. So this person, yeah, is the same person that I went on my first date with 20 years ago. I don't think it's a romantic match already. Um, um, you know what I mean? It's like, he wasn't for me back then, probably isn't for me now, but you never know. I just sort of make a cool story to go on another date 20 years later. So I'll put a picture up of us when we were 18 and we went on our first date. I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. It is going to be in the evening on a school night, but I'm doing it for the cool story, bro. Just got back from the date. Uh, it's so weird to see someone from your past, you know, when you were a child, pretty much. He did not remember me. <laughs> I don't blame him for that. It was one date and I only remember because he was the very first person I ever went on a date with. So naturally I remembered. But um, yeah, we just had a fun time because we both grew up in the same area. So we were just talking about growing up and being parents now. But yeah, I don't think there was any romantic connection. He's just separated from his wife 
um, for reasons that were everything to do with them and nothing to do with him. Uh, he, uh, my heart goes out to him for the situation he's in, unfortunately. Um, and I think he's still grieving that and coming to terms with that. Uh, so I, t I don't think he did mention like he just doesn't think actually that he should be dating at this point in time anyway. But it was a good catch up. It was fun. Um, you know, it was just very friendly. It was nice. It was like hanging with a, with a mate that you haven't seen in 20 years. But uh, yeah, it was lovely, but no romance there. Uh, I should have gotten a photo with him. I just didn't, too busy chatting and I didn't get a photo because that would have been cool. But uh, yeah, I will let you know tomorrow about the books that I've read, but that was the experience today. Hello guys, <laughs> let me update you on all the other books that I read this week. I have read quite a bit. So first up, we've got The Emotional Lives of Teenagers. So I'm not rating this one because once again, it's on a subject that I have read a lot of books about. So me saying, well, I didn't really learn anything new doesn't mean it's not a great book. It's just, I've read so much of the subject matter that there's not a lot of novel kind of bits of information. So this was fine. Um, I have a thing with psychologist written books when they're obviously doing uh, transcripts from work with their clients. They really feel so scripted and inorganic that it just makes me cringe a bit because I'm thinking to myself, mm, is a teenager really engaging in dialogue this way with their shrink? I don't know. So yeah, like it is, it's still, it's good. You know, it's not bad. Um, if you haven't read a lot of books and you probably really like this one, it's just, I've read so many, I'm kind of looking for something a bit new and, and novel, but um, yeah, this was this book. So the next book I read was My Brilliant Friend and I ended up DNFing this. So it was about two girls growing up in Italy and about their friendship. Man, there's a lot of violence in this town. A lot of people are getting killed and murdered and injured. The boys throw rocks at the girls' heads and split their foreheads open. And it just wasn't for me. It's a translated book and with a lot of translated fiction most of the time I find the writing really cold and unemotional. There's like something missing there and it was the case with this one too. So because also the plot camera fell down wasn't particularly gripping uh, or interesting I decided to do it. Then I read Pink Slime. So this is a translated work. It is about this sort of red algae that blooms on the water in near this town and it causes these like winds that pretty much kill the population. It causes their skin to just continue to fall off until they die. I think that was the shtick. Uh, and she chooses to stay behind in the town for reasons that really just don't stack up. No, she has the opportunity to leave, to go somewhere where there isn't this pink algae killing everybody, but she chooses not to. Uh, it mostly focuses on her relationship with her mother, with her ex-husband, and with a young boy who has a condition where he cannot stop eating and he will eat things that are not made to be eaten and not edible. It didn't really do anything for me. I'd given it 2.75. It, it didn't really go anywhere. Nothing really happened. The whole setup is all just in the beginning and then that's pretty much it. So it just wasn't my cup of tea. And then I started Forget Me Not, which is about two young girls who are in a relationship secretly with each other, about to finish school and head off together when one of them has an accident and gets amnesia. Look, this is very easy to read, uh, but for me, I got about a quarter of the way through and I just thought, I just can't read teenage novels that aren't fantasy because <laughs> I am just too far removed from that and it's just too young. It's just too young for me, even though they're, they were both 18, I just read really, really young and um, I don't really want to read about young girls, you know, <laughs> I'd rather read about women. So for me, I had to DNF it. And then I read The Lighthouse Witches. So I gave this 3.75. So I 
really enjoyed my time with this book. In this book, if you've got a mother, single mother with her three young daughters who relocates to this lighthouse because she's been commissioned to paint a mural on it. Uh, this town has a lot of superstition. They talk about Faye kidnapping children and bringing back changelings and the way that you know that they're changelings is because they have a number sort of etched into their skin. And a lot of weird stuff goes down involving the children and the mother and the people in the town. So this is a time jump book. There is time travel involved and it's a bit of a mystery of what is going on, what is happening. And I actually kind of enjoyed it. it wasn't amazing like I felt like it could have been executed a little bit better but I was invested <laughs> I did want to know what's happening with these girls are any of them changelings what happened with the disappearance of the mother and the youngest daughter and all this stuff there was a lot of mystery involved a lot of stuff about witches being burned and that's why the town is supposedly cursed because they killed a lot of witches in that town and and um the witches put a curse on them that they would you know lose their children and since then, children kept going missing and returning odd. So yeah, it was there was a lot of murder and mayhem and weird shit. So <laughs> it was uh, it was up my alley, and also a lot of it to do with the relationships between a mother and her daughters, and you know some of those daughters coming of age and pulling away and balancing all of that stuff. So I did enjoy it and gave it three point seven five stars. And now I've left the best to last. So this was an absolute surprise. So we've here got The Grace of Wild Things by Heather Fawcett. This was a five star read for me. I know, right? A middle grade book came in and saved the day, but this was so wonderful. It was very easy to read. I got, I flew through this book, absolutely flew through it. Um, they've got lovely little leafy illustrations on some of the chapter headings, but it's basically about a young orphan and her raven familiar. So already you've got me with the raven familiar who cannot find a home and desperately wants one, wants to belong, wants to have a family, wants to feel like she's wanted basically. And she decides that after the nth time a foster family has given her back, doesn't want her, she decides to go off and find a witch because she has magic. She's a natural, you know, everything comes effortlessly to her, things that take other witches years to master, she gets. So she goes and finds a witch and this witch is definitely not a good person. <laughs> Immediately, the witch shoves her in the oven to try and cook her up <laughs> because she's a child, isn't she? Uh, so I love that, that there are so many morally gray characters in this book. It is about finding home, finding family, finding yourself and being yourself, even though perhaps maybe not willing to change who you are to, to please other people and to make them feel more comfortable and to fit their expectations of what, you know, a young girl should be like. So I adore this. It did make me shed a tear at the end. Oh man, it got me right at the end, but I loved it. it and it's not super, it's kind of predictable, but there was a few things, twists and that thrown in there to make it not too predictable, but it's so sweet and it was so lovely. And it was just this, this cozy little story about witches and magic and all those yummy things. So I just loved it. <laughs> Honestly, I did. So much more than Heather's other book, which was um, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Uh, it just wasn't executed as well as I was hoping it would be. It was a bit long, a bit boring, lacked a bit of, a bit of warmth, whereas this one was full of warmth and I adored it. I absolutely loved it. So if also too, yes, if you have children, I recommend it for, you know, uh, middle grades or younger, to be honest. Uh, probably not too young because... <laughs> Like I said, um, maybe young children don't want to read about witches incinerating children, <laughs> but otherwise, fantastic. Way to end my week this week. So I hope you are having a glorious morning, afternoon or evening, and as always, stay well, star child.